Okay, folks, we are rolling. This is Thor 241, the second part of the first appearance of the gods of Egypt in the Marvel Universe, or the third part, or whatever. It is the first Seth story. That is what I think of it as, and that is its main appeal. We have four fighting skeletons on this cover, and I am pleased to say that this comic delivers on that promise. The far less interesting stuff is with Anthony Hopkins being ensorcelled into thinking that he is the big kahuna of the Egyptian pantheon. This is written by Bill Bungalow. No credit for Roger Thomas whatsoever this issue. And, well, I think it is key to establish that part one did not fare well with me. Been a while since I have done a flashback. That was meant to be an ongoing thing. Can it have that girl voice me in them anymore? I no longer have contact with people. That was sadly something that never got off the ground. I wanted to have flashbacks where I was voiced by a woman, and that would never ever be explained or acknowledged. I think I did two or three of them. File that under ideas that I didn't stick with because it required relying on a second person for an individual aspect of my output. Anyway, yeah, that issue was a pain in the arse. I got some resistance for ripping it, and I did start to feel like maybe I was overreacting. But no, I stand by it now. It was a shit issue. It was an issue that deliberately did the bare minimum. It did below the bare minimum even. And that is why it earned its fate. This issue, on the other hand, I quite enjoyed. The Gods of Egypt, they have taken control of Anthony Hopkins because they need him and his power to oppose their enemy, Seth. Seth made his first appearance in part one and it was very incongruous. It was entirely in Lord Dumpen flashbacks. I am not a big fan of when a significant character appears that way, like they are in the background of some backstory. Especially when it is the case that the very next issue is going to focus on them. You want to set up your bad guy better than through backstory theatre. And this Anthony Hopkins plotline is the least interesting part of it. And he doesn't even do that much. Instead, Thor agrees to accompany the gods of Egypt and his brainwashed dad into battle against Seth. On the provision that afterwards his dad is freed from servitude. Wonky as shit plotting, but the issue improves directly after, when we start getting to the stuff with Seth. Seth is a death god. He worships death. He is the Egyptian god of chaos and destruction. 
he goes on to have some tremendous usage in future Thor stories. I will be spending the rest of the video explaining Seth and all the comics with Seth in. But before I do, pay attention to this locale that Thor and the other gods have arrived in to do battle with Seth. I am only pointing it out because we see it again one more time. And I am so easy to please that I appreciate seeing it again. First off, Seth is based on myth. Ancient myth. He is otherwise called Set. But we will come back to that name later on. I do not speak of Set. I speak of Seth. The Marvel character, the Marvel interpretation of the mythical deity, Seth. I really like Seth. His name fucking sucks because it doesn't in any way sound like a bad guy or evoke any fear. It is like if Joker had been named Josh instead. Fuck, that is going to become channel law, isn't it? I'm going to have to start calling Joker by the name Josh. I don't want to do that. That's shit. After this, Seth appears in some issues of Marvel 2 for 1, also by Bill Bungalow. In those, he battles Thor again. And I have already said so, but I do really enjoy Seth as a villain. He is the sleeper it of Thor villains. Seth also fights Thing in those issues, obviously. Thing from Fantastic Force. And look, it is this dimension again. It is whatever dimension this is meant to be verbatim. I might track those issues down. Those Marvel 2 for ones. There's three. Including an appearance they are not reprinting in the Epic Collections. An appearance of one of my subscribers. Or one of my ex-subscribers. Who I had to block because he was too miserable and negative and it was infectious for me. It was affecting my videos. I gave him... Well and truly enough chances. I cannot remember what the breaking point was. He also kept talking about COVID vaccinations, which I would immediately delete. And also announcing that certain words are not offensive and that I am a giant cook because I don't want to say wog, which has a long Horrible history in the UK. But he didn't know that because he was an ignorant American who also didn't understand the connotations of working class having any different meaning outside of his country. I think Human Fire is in those stories as well. I don't care what you, my viewers, Believe all your personal politics. You can be whatever you are, as long as you respect that daft videos about old comics aren't the forum to start pushing your unrelated conspiracies. And your arguments about not being able to say the N-word anymore. Those issues also feature a bad guy 
from Marky Mark comics. They are the first appearance of Nth Man. Not to be confused with the Nth Man who recently featured in a covers video. The story is I got that Nth Man comic thinking it was the Nth Man from Marvel 2 for 1. But here is Loose Pages and Seth's Skellington Army. This is such a marked improvement over the first part where nothing happens. We have Thor fighting Skellingtons. And what's not a love there? The Skellingtons, these Skellingtons, they also return in those Marvel 2 for 1 issues. Another important Seth appearance, not long after these, is in Thor Annual 10, where he is among the assembled Council of Death Lords. Not to be confused with the L-Lords, some of whom are also among the Death Lords. Not to be confused with the Fear Lords either, none of whom are also among the Death Lords. Seth, he attempts to fight and is then defeated and absorbed by the god who lives inside the sun because that is that issue of four that i definitely will review one day we're getting closer you have seen two pages from it in this video it has taken a hundred years but i finally let you see inside of it somewhat it also feels very unprofessional and weird that I have talked about Seth and it is only now on page 18, which is loose, that we get to see Seth. In this, we actually get a giant bit of Seth continuity, well, Marvel continuity for him. Something happens by the end that will motivate Seth forevermore as a Thor enemy. And he does become a major Thor enemy. A dramatically major Thor enemy who can fight Anthony Hopkins even. On Tom Falcon's run on Thor, Seth was the first big bad. He was the evil death god who wished to exact revenge on Thor. And he is a tremendously over-the-top, almost caricature, evil nemesis. But he really works well. He and his army, no longer skeletons, Sadly, they invade Fairyland. And the thing that really sold Seth as a bad guy is that this was like an actual war. It wasn't a single issue. It wasn't a one and done affair. For half a year, we were having Fairyland fight off Seth's legions even in issues of west coast avengers it was a conflict that some might say dragged on but i would say was paced to properly establish what was happening as important and milestone it is quite epic the whole story. Along the way we have loads of things like Tom Hiddleston. We have 
Captain America in his captain costume, lifting Thor's magic armour. We have Darth Knight, he is along for the entire ride. We have some meaningful deaths of supporting characters. We have some giant battles. We have Amanda the Enchanter. It is, I say, the strongest part of Tom Falcon's tenure on Thor's title. He was trying to follow in the footsteps of Simon Waltonson. And if he kept writing stories to the standard of the War of the Pantheons, as it is called, I think people would consider him a worthy successor. By the way, what you are seeing now is an unused cover for Thor issue 400. Fantastic image. I'm sure they would have brought Thor and Seth closer together when it came time to apply the logo and the copy and the finishing touches. But instead they went with a homage to Thor's first appearance. Which is, I suppose, a preview of what is to come for the title after that issue. I have always liked Seth, due in part to those stories. The Captain America appearance. I read that when I was getting through Marky Mark G's run, because it obviously features Captain America... And then when I eventually read all those Thor issues, I thought Seth was this great villain. And even in this, before he has much presence, he is still oddly compelling. I imagine a big part of that is his future stature, and that I am enjoying seeing this earlier take of the character and how certain things will resurface later on, or seeing traits that continued. The problem with Seth is that, unfortunately, nobody outside of Tom Falcon used them. Tom Falcon came back to him in the mid-90s. Well, first, there were some issues of 90s 4. But he had him again as a big mega villain in Journey into Mystery. That's just his real name. Journey into Mystery. Seth was trying to destroy Fairyland once more. He had imprisoned Anthony Hopkins, and this was when Thor was believed dead after Onslaught Man. We had some callbacks to his first story with certain characters facing him again. We got to see him beat the shit out of Wreck-It Ralph as well. Seth really should go down in history as one of Thor's major bad guys, even if it is just in the works of mainly one writer. In fact, Tom Falcon even had Seth in Spider-Woman in the Mc2 universe. He was a bad guy in a story of that, this time, he had taken the lead of the Sons of the Serpent. Seth was a big bad for Spider-Woman. And that is really silly and indulgent. Doesn't really make sense to have him now be a Spider-Woman enemy, just because Tom Falcon is the writer. All I remember is that Spider-Woman kicked him in the knackers. 
That wasn't how he was defeated, thankfully. He also turned into a big serpent, and this time it looked much better than the other times he became a serpent. Serpent will be the last thing I am going to talk about. But before that, let's cover the development I mentioned before. Seth loses his arm in battle. In this issue, Anthony Hopkins blows one of Seth's arms off. And this is something that, throughout his subsequent appearances, is maintained. He is one-armed, well, one-handed, and he eats Thor and Fairyland and Anthony Hopkins so much for this specifically. This injury is also what allows the heroes to win the fight, essentially, Seth lost the hand, and now he is lost in the abyss of this dimension. Remember when I said that the mythical deity that this character is based on is more well known under the name Seth? You are probably thinking of another Marvel character. Seth, the evil serpent god as featured in SeaWorld Attacks. Now, I am the leading YouTube expert on all things SeaWorld Attacks, so I will explain Seth's relation to Seth and SeaWorld Attacks. These are two different characters entirely. Seth is a primordial god. And Seth is from the Egypt-based pantheon of gods. Must be very confusing having two characters called similar names that are both evil serpent gods. And that is the backstory. In SeaWorld Attacks, we learn that back in the day, much of Seth's worshippers were usurped by Seth, who claimed to be Seth, and that they had been pronouncing his name wrong all this time. Fantastic little bit of marrying up some continuity and explaining and justifying this possible source of confusion by making it part of the backstory itself. If you do continue to confuse Seth and Seth, don't feel bad about it. Even Marvel Comics have done that too. There's also been no payoff ever to Seth having stolen Seth's converts. That is a story that only I could surely tell. SeaWorld Attacks 2, coming soon to an imagination near you. Oh, there's also a what-if issue about Seth. It's rubbish. Not worth talking about. That is this, though. And I think I have talked about Seth and how great Seth is enough. I was going to tackle the idea that Seth has barely appeared in the last 20 years. The last 30 years even. But I think that would be getting into a deeper topic of Thor comics. Moving away from the fantastical superhero elements. And I like this issue enough that I wanted to focus on Seth rather than where Thor comics have wound up in recent years. This is much better than the issue that preceded it, and I give it a seven thumbs up.